So uh, this talk is about interacting with a composable canvas. And uh, my name is Piotr Prus, and I'm working at uh, as Android developer at Tilt. I'm also a member of uh, DG3 City in my hometown uh, in Minsk, Poland. So uh, briefly about this talk and the agenda, uh, I will show you how to create this uh, animation that you can see on the screen, the bar chart with uh, selection animation and temporary uh, selection also. So you can see here that we can uh, not only select and animate one of the uh, bars, but uh, we can temporarily uh, select. So hold, hold the second one and uh, animate those two things. So we'll also uh, say a little bit about uh, state. First, uh, I will uh, make a short uh, recap uh, of about Android Canvas, how it works, and uh, com uh, composable Canvas, what are, what are the key differences, from my opinion, and then uh, I will share the implementation. Then uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, interaction how to make the, those selections, then how to manage the animation, then a little bit about state management, and at the very end, uh, how to test things in the composable canvas. So first thing, uh, basics about canvas uh, coordinate system. So the canvas uh, have two axes, uh, one, uh, the X, is increasing horizontally from left to right or right to left, depending on your uh, system. And then the y-axis is going from top to bottom. And when we want to add something to our canvas, for example, those vertical lines, we need to uh, remember, uh, we need to calculate the distance between them because everything that we want to draw into the canvas, we need to calculate its position, distance, and size. So uh, why I mark those two uh, blue rectangles at the start and end? Those are the padding of the canvas. To be sure that everything that we are mm, drawing will be visible for our user. So we could potentially start drawing without those paddings, but then Imagine that you have this uh, vertical line with width of four pixels, and you're starting from um, point zero. So then your line will be, uh, there will be just half of the line because the width, uh, half of the width will be outside of your canvas. That's why it's a good practice to adding this start and end and top and bottom padding to have the draw area uh, uh, with some padding. So in our case, there will be more padding at the start and end, and then in, uh, top and bottom, the draw area uh, will uh, to inside to, to show this uh, bar chart. So uh, what uh, Canvas uh, functions can we use? We have the draw rectangular, we have a draw oval, we can draw lines, text, bitmaps, and paths. And uh, in this example, I will use three of them, the rectangular, line, and text. But the text is tricky because it's uh, experimental in composable canvas, but I will, uh, I will tell you more about that later. So uh, how composable canvas looks underneath. So maybe you're surprised. I was very surprised the first time when I saw it. But the canvas actually is uh, with modifier draw behind. That means you, you could use canvas draw behind function or just draw behind modifier function on your every composable in your code. Explicitly use the composable canvas. You can just call modifier draw behind, and you can already use your draw scope and use the canvas functions. But this has some uh, limitations. So for example, uh, we have the 
sample canvas uh, uh, in the box uh, with draw behind. And I will just uh, draw um, small rectangular. It is displayed correctly, but uh, if we are adding something in that box, oh, sorry, this slide should be the next one. Uh, if I add something into this uh, box, this will cover uh, our um, our canvas. So the blue box is not longer visible because the, the red one is uh, on the upper layer. As you can see, if I will align it differently, the blue box is still there. So we can use this draw behind function, but it has some limitations. So what are the differences between Android View Canvas and Composable Canvas? So there are not a lot, but from my perspective, I was always struggling when I was doing something on Android Views, uh, which function I should use in which way is correct to calculate dp to dp to px and uh, pixels to, to dp. And now with local density that we can use uh, everywhere and calculate dps uh, very easily. And when it comes to uh, Android View Canvas, uh, this class uh, shows how to uh, use uh, Canvas basic implementation with draw text. And we also have here on size change to react on every change of our Canvas. And in Composable, it's fairly easy because in our on draw scope, uh, we have the width and height provided uh, by the composable. So there are no much differences. There are like normal differences between those two worlds, uh, Android system views and composable. Uh, but what stand out is draw text, which is currently experimental in composable canvas. So we can use this function that is experimental uh, it takes text measurer uh, that uh, measure the text in the composable. And this is very useful um, in the situations when we have a lot of text in our canvas, because this will measure the text only once and then reuse this, um, this class into our canvas. So it will not create the, the text class all the time as the native uh, canvas. And then we have the, uh, the text uh, field and the offset to choose top left corner of the text to position it correctly in the canvas. On the other hand, we can use still the native draw text uh, canvas function from our composable. And to make it happen, we need to call this, which is uh, our uh, draw context, then canvas, then native canvas, and then we can call whatever uh, native canvas function we want. In this uh, situation, draw text. So we have the string, we have the position of X and Y, and then we have the text paint. And the text paint is a little bit tricky because this is the uh, Android graphic class, and we need to remember about that. So we cannot use the colors from composable. We need to calculate color to ARGB, and then we need to use the paint align something from the Android uh, graphics uh, library, not from the composable. So. Uh, I will now start. Uh, I will now show you how to implement this uh, bar chart. So starting very simple, uh, I I added here a row with uh, fill max width and uh, some padding and height of 150 dp and horizontal scroll uh, because the the whole bar chart will be uh, wider than the screen. Then uh, I'm taking the density because I will uh, that to calculate my uh, dp to pixels because all the values that we are putting in the 
canvas are in pixels. I'm calculating my horizontal padding, which is my start and end padding of the uh, canvas draw area. Then I'm calculating the distance. Uh, I choose here 2060p, so I'm just uh, converting that to pixels. And then I, need, I, I can uh, calculate uh, my width for the draw area. So in this case, this will be distance multiplied by list size. And uh, I'm adding here horizontal padding twice at an end padding for the draw area. Having that uh, inside the row, I'm calling canvas with modifier of fill max height because the height of the parent is already, uh, already 150 dp. And the width of calculated width, which is wider than the um, row. And uh, Canvas have the width and height. I start to calculate points and uh, sizes of my elements in the canvas. So I will start start from the most basic uh, component here, which is the horizontal line. So um, first, I'm calculating the line distance, which is size dot high, because the y axis is um, increasing downwards. So I uh, need to call minus small padding times two. This is my top and bottom padding. And I'm dividing by, that by four because I have five lines with four spaces, so four distances. Now I'm repeating my draw line function five times with given color of gray and the offset. So offset here is X and Y. Uh, coordinates and x is zero because I want to start from the very beginning of the screen of my draw area. And then it's a uh, small padding. So this is like end of, so this is, uh, sorry, the top padding plus uh, index multiplied by a line distance. And the end will be just one difference because the size uh, dot width uh, will be my value for the x. So we are now we now have the horizontal lines uh, repeated five, time, five times. Now, how to uh, draw those rectangles? I made a simple uh, data class um, that called bar, uh, bar area, and I have here index. Uh, X start, X end, and value. This will be very useful for future selection and animation. And to create the list of bar areas, I'm just taking my list of, uh, of values and uh, creating the bar area for each of it, taking the X start as a horizontal padding. So the start padding of my drawing area plus uh, distance uh, between my um, bars uh, multiplied by index minus distance divided by two because I do not want, uh, I, I want the X start not the center of the of the bar. So I have here uh, one, uh, one X is calculated with minus distance divided by two and the second one is with plus. So I have the X start and X end. So whenever user will later on click on those, I will check if that uh, click was between those two values. So the for that reason. So going back to implementation, I am calculating the bar high, which is just item value times some scale. This is uh, not that important. Then we have the draw around a rectangular with uh, blue color. And I have here the offset. So again, some mathematics. I'm taking, once again, my horizontal padding, which is the starting of the draw area, plus uh, distance multiplied by index minus uh, by bar width divided by 2, because this is the top left corner um, of the bar 
not the center of it. So I'm um, subtracting this half of the width of the bar. Then the y is size.width, so the full size minus my bar height and minus top padding. Then I have the size of, of bar width and bar height, which is uh, uh, calculated each time, and the small corner radius, if I remember correctly, of 2dp. After that, I want to add some text uh, above the bars. So I'm using here the native canvas draw text function. This one is not experimental, but you can use the experimental one if you're brave enough. Uh, so I'm calling here the index.value for my text. Again, horizontal padding. I know I'm repeating that all the time, but this is uh, this is how how we are creating stuff in the canvas. We need to always remember that this is a global position at um, points, so we always need to add those paddings from left, right, top, and bottom. And the uh, uh, paint here uh, uses the Android uh, graphic library. So uh, I'm adding here uh, color and text align. So this paint is used as my uh, text paint to draw text. Here's how it looks right now. So I have the scrollable row with my canvas with some uh, values. We have the rectangulars, we have the horizontal line. So everything is draw into the canvas. Next step will be more interesting is interacting with this composable. So the interaction in composables uh, is done the same for canvas, box, or whatever we, we want. We are using special mm, modifier function, pointer input. And this, uh, how it works, is uh, using launcher effect that listen to uh, all the interactions that are connected with this modifier. And this modifier is connected with, with our composable. So whenever we interact with the composable, uh, it is consumed by this function, and we can call some uh, coroutines function and await some events. Uh, to show you how it works, um, I have here a custom modifier that calls that uh, that I called start gesture, and we have here the high order function on start that will be called every time user tap somewhere in our composable. So at the beginning we we are taking the interaction source, and the interaction source uh, is the class that uh, takes so it it waits. Um, so, so, or it it register. Sorry, it register all the interactions or on our composable. After that, I'm calling pointer input with that interaction source. And then for each gesture, I'm starting the coroutine scope, and await every pointer event. And one of those event that interests me are the touch. So I'm awaiting first down. This is the coroutine function. So it awaits user um, pointing finger down on the. I'm consuming this down change, so the UI will not be frozen. And I'm calling my on start high order function with the touch position of X. So I know exactly where user uh, put the finger in this composable. Now, uh, this example uh, is something that I'm using to, to know uh, whether user started the interaction, cancel it, or complete. And this will be used later on with the animation. So when it starts, 
the interaction, I will show the animation of the bar chart and whenever user cancel, animate down the, um, the background and when it completes, the selection will be made. So on start is uh, the same as the previous. I'm just awaiting first down and consuming this change. When user, so to check if user cancel this, so the cancel, uh, the cancel is when the user put the finger and then do not release it, do not take it off, but move somewhere uh, outside of our composable or just move around. That's why we are calling here wait for up or cancellation. And if this up is equal to null, then we know that user canceled the interaction. And for completed, uh, when up is not null, we are consuming this change to do not freeze the UI, and we are calling the oncomplete with the position. So then we could uh, check which bar was click it, complete it, and finally select it. So the simple selection, uh, for the simple selection, I uh, I have here the mutable state of uh, zero, which will be my index of, uh, of one of the bars. And then I have the selected bar uh, field that use uh, the rivet state of. And so whenever one of those um, one of those variables selected position or bar areas change, my derivative state of will be uh, run and calculate again which uh, bar is selected. So I'm taking bar areas and I'm finding the one that the selection position is between x start and x end. And I know that this one uh, has been selected. So on completed, I'm up updating the selected position. So whenever that change, my uh, compose my composable is uh, recreated. So this is a stateful uh, fun This is a stateful composable. In my draw scope, whenever the selected bar is not null, I'm drawing uh, the background um, with some alpha. I'm here using the brush with blue color from alpha 30% to transparent. I need to, again, to put the top offset. Because so we to calculate uh, the position, the, the top left corner of this uh, selection. So in this situation, it will be horizontal padding plus distance times uh, bar index minus area width. So this is the width of our selection. And then the same for uh, y is area high plus top padding, which is the padding of the canvas minus area high uh, so the sorry the, the area the area of the bar then we have the size again the same as the mm, draw rectangular for bar and some corner radius and since we know how to select those things and interact with them on the canvas, now it's time for animations. And this one was the hardest for me to, to make it happen, to make it work. And I will go uh, briefly through, um, through my, sorry, I missed the word, uh, how was, how was, of it and what uh, questions I, I needed to answer to make it work. So here you can see Jetpack Compose animation flowchart, and I will answer those questions. Which ani what which animation function we should use, or is the proper one for this purpose? So at the start we have uh, is your animation content change in layout? 
So this is for animation that are changing size or they are um, changing the visibility. So in my case, the answer is no. The second one is, is the state based and happens during the composition? So nothing is, is uh, happening during the composition because this is only after the user interaction. So again, the answer is no. And do we need the fine control over animation time? And here again, we are not controlling the animation time because the user with its uh, interaction starts and ends the animation. So again, we have no. And the last question is, is the animation is the only source of truth? And I think it, in that case it is because when animation uh, ends, we have the selection. So I answered here yes and choose the anima table. An anima table is quite easy to use in composable. Uh, we have here uh, just the simple class anima table with starting value of zero floating number. And on my uh, tap or press modifier on, on complete lambda, I'm calling selected position uh, it's equal to it, which is the X position. And I'm calling anima table animate to one. So it will increase the value uh, from zero to one in some time. And then in the draw scope, uh, I'm adding this anima table value to Y. Uh, so the Y is now uh, chart area high minus chart area high times animatable value. So this use animatable va value that is changing uh, on time during the selection. Now how to manage those two selections. I will not share with you the whole code because there is uh, a lot of things quite maybe not that complicated, but there is just a lot of a lot of I don't think it's suitable for presentation, but I will share a GitHub repo with the full code later on. So to manage those two states, I came with idea to have uh, those four fields. One is selected position. So the same as uh, we used previously to select one bar, a smooth state of zero. Right position. So when we do not know yet if user cancel or complete the selection. And this one is mutable state of minus infinite uh, because we do not want to have any bar selected. Then we have first anima table with anima table one F uh, because uh, I want to have the first bar selected to show the user that this can be interacted and the bar can be selected. And then we have the temporary anima table when the user do not know yet if uh, if he wants to cancel or uh, complete the selection. So we have the anima table of zero. So now I will just uh, share with you the steps that needs to be done in the code to, to make it work. So it's some sort of uh, pseudo code. So when Jester started, uh, I taking the temporary selection and giving it the value of X position. Then I'm starting my animation. So I'm taking the temporary anima table and animate to one. When the user cancel, so I'm calling the gesture canceled. In this gesture control function, I'm resetting the temporary selection to minus one. And then the temporary anima table goes uh, goes to one again. So I'm resetting the selection. And uh, when the gesture is complete, I taking the anima table because this is the one that will be eventually selected. I'm taking the temporary anima table value and animate to one. That means that wherever we were in the progress, so for example, the user started uh, the interaction and the uh, selection was in the half, let's say. So the progress was, was of the selection of this animation of 50%. Now we can, with this plus, we are animating that to one. 
so there will be not this uh, jumpy animation from zero to one. It will just follow uh, follow the user gesture, so uh, follow the progress. So wherever progress was um, not stop it, but like pause it, then we are calling animate to one, so it will complete. Then I'm resetting the temporary anima table back to zero, and selection is now the same as temporary selection, and the temporary selection is reset back to minus one. And here we have the final result. As you can see, we have two states, two two selections that uh, that can be uh, visible at the same time when user click. Uh, the one of the bars, the animation starts from the bottom to top with this uh, blue uh, uh, background with some alpha. A user can cancel as it was shown right, right now or uh, click the second one and then the previous animation goes from one to zero or from zero to one for the selection. If you would like to check the full code, uh, here is my GitHub repo. It's Piotru slash bar chart demo. And you can see uh, exactly what is displayed right now on the screen. So about this subject, I made the article uh, this year. It was published on Prandroid Dev on Medium, interacting with Composable Canvas, so the same name as this presentation. But this is not the end. I would like to share with you how to test something like this. So those selections of the canvas. Uh, before we begin, uh, I added I added the test tag to my row, so I can easily use that in the test. I'm oh, sorry for this animation. So in my uh, test class, I'm uh, creating the composable test rule, and then I'm starting my test. I have the simple list of eight elements, I'm calling set content, and I have my bar chart canvas with bar selected uh, uh, that selects nothing, and I'm just checking if that exists. After that, I'm taking another test uh, to click on the third element of the list. So I have this list uh, of eight elements. I take one of this element as that is selected, which is the list value first. I'm calculating my distance. And uh, here you can see that uh, we can take the city uh, from the compose test rule. It works the same as uh, local density dot current from composable function. I'm, cal uh, I'm calculating my distance to the third element. Then I'm calling my bar chart canvas. And at the bar selection, I'm changing the uh, selection item value. Uh, yeah, I'm updating my selection value. Then on this. Uh, mm, on this bar chart, I'm so I'm calling on note with tag, which is bar chart. So on this bar chart, I'm, I'm performing the gesture with click and uh, position on the calculated distance. Uh, and the y distance is 1f. So the click is at the very top of the um, composable. And at the end, I'm just checking if the selection right now is uh, number three. So the third element was selected. The next uh, test I did is the cancel of the selection of this third element. So the be beginning is the same. There is a list and selected item. I calculate the distance uh, to the third element. I'm uh, setting the content for bar chart canvas. And now on this note with bar chart, I'm performing few gestures. So first, I'm calling down. So this will work the same as our pointer input await down. 
with the offset of this given distance and one f one uh, floating number for for y so it will be at the very top of the canvas then i performing the gesture moved by and i'm just moving by the same distance so i'm basically at the point six now but i didn't release my finger i didn't uh, take it off then i'm calling up so it worked like that that my finger was at the position of three then i move it to position six and then i release the finger and i'm checking that uh, um, is the current value is one so the one that was at the very beginning so the selection selected item was not updated so uh this this concludes this presentation and i want to briefly uh, briefly talk about my thoughts about the composable canvas so drawing using the composable canvas is very similar to android view canvas the draw text is experimental in compose version it probably will be stable someday, but right now I'm using native native one. Testing is easy and very readable in Composable and even using this canvas because of all those gestures that we can. And animation has really superb documentation. Thank you very much for listening. And I'm open for your questions. All right, uh, thank you for the presentation. And also, I think we had a small, at some point during the presentation, of it just disappeared, but the background still remained. But we could hear you and we could see your slides. So yeah, I didn't want to interrupt you. But uh, yeah, if it's like, if, if it's fine, maybe you can just disable and enable a camera or otherwise you can just proceed with the question. Hey, sorry, Peter. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Um, yeah. Can all right. Me? Yeah. All right. So I think we can proceed with. If you can open the Q and A tab, uh, we have a bunch of questions here. So please feel free to read them. Uh, yeah. So the first question is: Isn't passing a mutable class? to composables make them unstable and do not notify the compiler on when composition. Mm. Which, which class? Can you elaborate more and then we'll be back with that question later? Performance-wise, what is the benefit of drawing a component with canvas while you can achieve the same result with some composable row box and columns? Very good question. Um, so I asked the same question to few Googlers a few, few months ago or a year ago. And uh, also at uh, Kotlin, uh, Kotlin Lang um, Slack. And uh, there is uh, there is a performance uh, issue with not, maybe not an issue, but uh, but the answer from one of the Googlers is that when you want to multiply a lot of um, a lot of boxes, let's say, or a lot of uh, simple simple views. Uh, we should probably use then the lazy row or lazy column and uh, having having a, um, so adding adding that to the view is not that that good as adding the comp the, the the composable canvas that already knows its uh, dimensions I made some performance check with 1000 elements with the box of width with 2dp and uh, lazy um, lazy row 
And with 1000 box elements, I had uh, a lot of performance issues on my emulator. And with uh, Composable Canvas, I had none. I could uh, take, uh, the answer the, the answer on, from one of Googlers at the Kotlin Nuts line. Uh, yeah, but it there is a performance issue when you are putting hundreds of or thousands of uh, boxes in the row. The next one, can we use the same draw canvas function to compose with Wear OS? Actually, I have no idea. Sorry. I, I do not have any experience with Wear OS. I cannot answer that. Have you found any limitations? Do you still hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Pablo? Yeah, I, I just got some information that there is some uh, network issues. Um, oh, okay, uh, have you found any limitations or missing features with Composable Canvas API comparing to view-based API? Uh, as I mentioned, the draw text uh, when when first I uh, I made the research on Canvas a year ago, there was no uh no draw text function at all so uh, i needed to use the native one and i created the issue on uh, google issue tracker and it was resolved a few months ago so it was more than a year from composable 1.0 without draw text functionality in the composable canvas but apart of that it's working good Awesome. I don't know if author of the first question could edit it because I do not know to which mutable class uh, it refers. Yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah, the author of the question, yeah, please uh, add some clarifications. Um, yeah, I think. Apart from that, we don't have any more questions. Yeah, thanks a lot, Petr. It was really useful and awesome talk. And for those, and thanks everybody for watching. And just in fifteen minutes, we'll be back with another awesome talk.